It is 744 this morning and election day is next month and Houstonians will select a new mayor for the Bayou City. Based on recent polls, the top six candidates include Sylvester Turner, Adrian Garcia, Chris Bell, Bill King, Stephen Costello and Ben Hall in no particular order. Now, one of the candidates is joining our roundup panel in the newsroom. Stephen Costello will be fielding questions from Fox 26 senior legal analyst Chris Tritico, Fox 26 news analyst Mustafa Tamiz, and public policy analyst Jackie Bally. Good morning again, guys. Good, Good morning. morning. All right, so what you got for us? All right, we're going to talk to Stephen Costello right now. Stephen, thank you for being here. Oh, it's my you, pleasure. Thank you, you actually got here early. You got ahead of Chris Bell, and, and then you had to wait. But uh, we appreciate your being here. Oh, that's fine. The, um, one of your campaign platforms is you're going to put 1,500 police officers on the street. At the same time, you say you're going to tackle the debt burden by the pension uh, burden, and you're going to reduce taxes. I want you to tell me how you're going to pay for all that. Okay, well, the primary issue here is the fact that pensions are driving the finances of the city of Houston. And if we're able to get local control, uh, we can actually develop a benefit package that, uh, which is the current defined benefit plan, uh, that we could actually uh, eliminate the automatic cost of living adjustments, freeze the embedded deferred retirement option plan, and we net $200 million every year, every year. And so, when the police chief came before city council and asked for a hundred million dollars over the next five years to put fifteen hundred new police officers on the street we could do that in the first year alone so that that is really the defining process in terms of finances within the city of Houston. But that assumes the legislature will work with you and they haven't worked with Mayor Parker in three sessions now on the same issue. The issue here though is it, uh, people believe it's just a city of Houston problem and it's not. It's a city of Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio, Corpus Christi. So the minute I'm elected the first thing I would do is reach out to all the other major metropolitan city mayors and say listen we need to put together a coalition to go before Austin and give us local control. My colleagues and clients who do a lot of work in infrastructure are very excited about your candidacy because you are an engineer. You have a background in engineering. And so tell me why you feel that has, you have a unique perspective because of your discipline in running for mayor. Well, engineers are problem solvers. And so uh, we, we know how to deliver infrastructure, particularly roads and drainage and water and sewer. And, uh, you know, I drive the same roads everybody else does. We understand the situation in terms of the success and the difficulties in Rebuild Houston. Uh, but Rebuild Houston is about a rebuilding of the city while we maintain it, while we rebuild it. The problems that we have today citywide are due to the way we've done it in the past for decades. So uh, I'm excited about Rebuild Houston program and I look forward to modifying it. But how do you feel about public works though? I, I want to know, how do you feel about public works specifically in that department? Well, it's interesting. A lot of people believe public works is like a black box, that uh, they don't know what's going on. And a lot of that is related to the engineering community in itself because we're problem solvers. Give us a problem, we'll come back when we're done. And yet the public really wants to know what you're doing, when you're doing it, and how you're doing it. And so we need to do a better job as a city reaching out to the public as we're planning these projects and then as they're going under construction so they can get a better appreciation of the, as the actual activity going on. Hello, Costello. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to say that. Thank you. Um, you talk a little bit about public safety and crime. And I know you, you know, running for the office, you have traveled the city probably far more than you ever have traveled to the city. What have you learned and what can we do about public safety? Well, as an at-large council member, I, I, I represent everybody in the city of Houston and I've had that opportunity for six years. And we need to go back to a program called community policing. Uh, we need to have people that we recruit, the cadets from the neighborhoods. We need to give them incentives to live and stay in the neighborhoods. And we need to get them to get more involved in the actual community outside of just public safety. Uh, so that's what's called community policing. Uh, we need to do a better job of getting more trust within the community. Uh, I mean, we have issues relative to what we would call the <coughs> success rate or clearance rate. So uh, those are things that we need to change internally within public, public safety. But the police department needs to become an integral part of the community. And that's where community policing comes involved. And, and there are cities throughout the country that say this is a good way to have it. So we as council members are exploring right now an incentive program to have police officers uh, move into specific zip codes. Uh, actually, since only less than 20% of the police force actually lives in the city of Houston, I'd rather just get them into the city first. And then we'll worry about what zip codes they're in. 
I, I was with a group of police officers uh, just on Friday, and their concern always is that they feel that they're very understaffed, that they are, uh, the, the, the city is growing much faster, but their ranks haven't grown. And you talk about a plan of increasing police officers right. uh, with, with the pension reform. How will you fill those classes, and how quickly do you think that needs to happen? Well, before I got on council, uh, several administrations ago, we used to do on an annual basis about six, cadet six or seven cadet classes a year. And in the first few years I was on council, we could barely afford two cadet classes. So if you think about where we are today, the average age of our workforce right now in public safety is right around 54, 55. Uh, and that's because everyone is in the system and we're not back filling in with young, young cadets. Uh, so that's where this gets involved in uh, getting more police officers on the streets, financing more cadet classes, getting two police officers in a car uh, for their safety as well as the safety of the people they interact with. Well, that's a pretty expensive venture to put two police officers in every car. I mean, you have to double the size of the force to do that and, and keep the same number of patrols. Well, you don't necessarily have to double the size of the force. It's, uh, mm -hmm. There is a significant increase in the police force, but if you, if you look back at 2004, we have 5,300 police officers. 2015, we have the same number of police officers, and yet the city's growing. So something has to change there. Uh, and that's why this, this integral part of my pension reform will allow us to finance significant numbers that we can get more And I don't disagree officers. with that, but 1,500 officers will not put two officers in every car. 1,500 police officers starting will not put every car have the two, two police officers. That's correct. I want to get your opinion on the two proposals that we have on the ballot, uh, the equal rights and also term limits. What are your thoughts? Do you agree with them or not, not agree with them? As a council member, I voted twice for, for the equal rights ordinance. I believe nobody should be discriminated against. As a businessman who employs people, I think this is good for the city to be an all-inclusive, all-welcoming city. Uh, relative to Proposition 2, which is term limits, I, I didn't vote for it to be on the ballot, and my reasoning had to do with not necessarily the term, as much as it is, is that the mayor, 16 council members, and the controller are all up for re-election at the same time. Uh, if you recall back in 2010 when the Term Limit Commission looked at that, they looked at phasing so that we don't have everyone up for re-election at the same time. And so I felt that the ballot really probably should have been more comprehensive in terms of term limits. Let me follow up on that because Mayor Parker said that it's not that we don't need any term limits. It's just that these are so restrictive that by the time somebody learns how to be a good council member, they have to leave. Well, I, I would venture to say that uh, most people could be a pretty quick learner. It's not that you're there two years, you don't know what's going on. Uh, I, I like the four-year term. I think that's a good thing because then you're not always campaigning. Uh, but then there's the, the opposite side saying, well, if you have a bad council member, you've got to wait four years to get them off a of council. So, uh, and we have congressmen that will run every two years. And so the issue here, though, if you look at it in terms of a district council member, it's the length of time it takes to get a project done. And so uh, that's probably one of the problems because you might, you might take two or three years to get a project started, and then a district, another district council member will come in and get rid of that project. So that's one of the issues there. The, the, this is a lot of inside baseball, but the blackout period was eliminated uh, recently after a Supreme Court decision in terms of fundraising. Is that compound the issue of having a four-year council member? I don't think so. I, I don't <coughs> think the blackout period had anything to do with really extending the term. It, it's more about accomplishment and what, what council members would like to accomplish over a period of time. All right, Stephen Casello, thank you very much for being here. Oh, it's my right pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so much. Good